Hey everybody. Hey everybody. I have a surprise for you today. I am in Hollywood, California, and I am going to do a private studio visit of an artist that you guys want to meet. So I'm going to take my mask off because we have to wear masks here in LA. So I'm excited to meet, to introduce you to Marco Lorenzetto. So Marco, are you here? Marco. All right, let me find you. All right. Hi. Hi. So we need to add you. We need your phone. You were just there. You were just in. Just join my live and then I can add you in. Okay. Can you see me now? I have to add you. Yeah. Guys, here we go. All right, so we're going to do this because of social distancing. We're going to... Hi, Chow. Hi, how are you? I'm good. So because of social distancing, we are going to do a studio visit, but we're going to keep our distance. Okay. You can see Marco is, is behind me. Um, so basically, we are here in Hollywood, like I mentioned, <laughs> and we're going to take a look at his studio, give you a little tour. Um, Marco, just to give you a little background of, uh, on him, he is Italian born, uh, but he's been in Los Angeles for eight years now. And he um, was really inspired growing up as a kid in Italy. He was really uh, inspired by um, the art around him, the light and the color around him. So I want to talk to you about not only his paintings, but the ceramics and the prints that he has, has created. So with that, Marco, I just wanted to say hi to you. Welcome. It's a pleasure to be in your studio and to have proper social distancing <laughs> <laughs> at the same time. I'm behind my glasses. I know. You're behind your glasses over there. I see you. I see you. I'm going to show you guys where he's sitting back there behind me. Um, so talk to us a little bit about your inspiration and your process. Well, I just woke up. So <laughs> good morning. <laughs> Uh, my inspiration? Um, well, I think my inspiration comes from me. So that means that I'm trying to be um, in touch as I can with uh, um, who I am every day. So right now I'm waking up, so I'm a little tired, uh, but uh, I'm ready for this interview. Very excited. <laughs> Amazing. What's the painting right behind you, the beige and the black painting? Um, this painting is um, a labyrinth so um, you have to lose yourself into it um, so you start from uh, zero and you go back to zero mm -hmm. um, so in that you have to find uh, the meaning of life amazing so are, do you paint with acrylics or oil or a combination um, usually it's a combination but uh, i do like uh, to paint with um, acrylics because they're water-based, um, so is uh, the process is um, um, it takes a fast time in a short um, um, in a short um, um, terms, but then it needs more time because you have to go back day in day and wait uh, uh, to see um, the painting that dries. So once it dries the first layers, you can paint again, mm -hmm. and then you can go until um, 21 layers or more. Wow. So that's how the process goes. So, so talk to us about like the inspiration. I mentioned that you grew up in Italy and you grew up uh, down the street from a museum, right? Yes, that's right. So how, how was it growing up there in Italy? And what, what really was the pivotal moment when you decided to be an artist and you thought this is something that you wanted to do? for a career? Well, I'm 35 years old and I feel that um, I've been an artist for 35 years. So wow. it's not easy to find words that can express how you feel, but you can try. 
Mm. Um, so I'm trying with you for the first time, I guess. Uh, I never done an interview um, to this point um, in my life before. So um, well, I, f I feel I start to talk about how I feel. So that's the beginning. So if you, if you can be vulnerable with yourself, you're able to be vulnerable with others. And I think in that state, um, you have the key um, to realize uh, what art means. Mm -hmm. So growing up in Italy has been the biggest uh, honor uh, that um, I had because it's the most beautiful country in the world. And, um, and I grew up in a city that it was full of uh, art um, and architecture and culture. And, um, and it's famous in the world uh, for making pottery, so mm -hmm. uh, ceramics. And uh, his name uh, in the world means Mayolica. Um, in, Fran in French means uh, faience, uh, ceramics. Um, and um, so I think um, for that um, special um, start point, um, um, I start to, you know, remember things and, 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 and yeah, that's how I started. No, thank you for, for talking about that. That's a, that's a really emotional uh, question that I ask you. And, um, and one, I mean, I love Italy. And I, I mean, I remember going to Rome for the first time and just being inspired by the architecture and the history and, and in Milan and Venice. And there's just so much history there and so much inspiration, you know, from your beautiful country, as you mentioned. Um, and, you know, you talk about the, cera you know, the ceramics that kind of inspired you maybe as a, as a child, but you really use the light and the color and the texture in your painting. So talk just a little bit about that because, I mean, I, I know that you did a ceramic series at Bergdorf, right? You launched that series, how many years ago was that? I think uh, almost four or three, I don't yes. Okay. Well, the project, yes, has been actually five years. And those are ceramics. here. Yes, we'll give you yes. guys a little peek of, of the ceramics. Yeah. Really beautiful. So what were, you, what were you going through at the time that you created the series of ceramics? I think uh, um, it started because, uh, so this is, I think, is my 15 years that I'm actually living as um, um, a successful artist. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> so on the 10 years anniversary, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I had to go back to my roots. And uh, ceramics has been my first fine art. And so <clears throat> uh, because of that, uh, I think I wanted to, uh, you know, uh, contribute and give back what I learned first. And so I had to mix uh, the way how I do my paintings um, and then uh, how I used to do ceramic. Um, so what I, what I wanted to use was also one of the oldest technique uh, that is pretty much mirroring paper. So it's like a way how you print in ceramics and you fire um, a paper that already has printed details and colors and texture of uh, your artwork. So I pick with uh, my family um, that um, they're always part of the process um, um, and we decide together, they help me to, um, to choose. Mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes they show me the way <laughs> and so we pick uh, our favorite artwork at the time that could tell us a little more about who I am mm -hmm. and then we randomly um, do it and, um, and it's funny because uh, our first test um, the first samples they actually are the ones that you're seeing right now so we didn't do any modification we just accepted how they came uh, um, 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 as, yeah. 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 
So did you spend much time uh, in any other city in the, in the U.S., or did you come straight to Los Angeles? I came, uh, uh, well, actually, uh, my family, um, the biggest gift they gave me uh, um, was to travel. So we had been traveling all our life. So I'd been in a plane when my mom, she was pregnant. And my mom's British from London. And so um, with that uh, saying, we were going to London every year for summer, for Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, my family was all spread. Uh, so we, are, we have uh, relatives in Canada. We have relatives in Kenya, in Africa, mm -hmm. um, and then Spain, uh, in the islands, in Tenerife, and, and So you France had a lot, lot, of, lot of inspiration because of all yes. your travels, right? Growing yeah, up. I think traveling is the best way how you can uh, study life because uh, it's, uh, sure. you experiment, you know, it's empiric. And you don't, have to, you, you don't need to study, you don't, have, you don't need to read a book. Um, you just enjoy, taste, different things, see different things, you know? Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Where, is, where is one of the first places that you want to go once this quarantine situation <laughs> calms down? I think South Africa, mm. uh, because, uh, I, yeah, I want to go, I want to go to South Africa. Okay. Yes. I haven't been to South Africa. Have you been before? Or no. Uh, I mean, with my mind and my heart, yes. <laughs> yeah. times, but I have friends there, so I'm it's looking awesome. forward to go. Yeah, it's also a place I want to go as well. Um, talk, to, talk to us about um, some of the charity projects that you're involved in. I know that um, you want to discuss that a little bit on the call today. Yeah. Um, well, I think um, when you... When you feel successful, it means that you are bringing um, into the work uh, the state of happiness and, and you're very enthusiastic about it. No? So when you achieve that uh, the state of mind, mm -hmm. you're able to give back very, very easily. Uh, so I think uh, charities, um, uh, the work comes from caritas. Um, in Latin, so it means it means to give back in a sacred way, uh, because uh, life has been given to you, and you didn't decide for it. And so, in with that point said, you have to give back because life has been given to you everything. And so, sometimes what happens that has. Um, you know, in my little mind, uh, you can have stereotypes and prejudice and uh, negativity and all those uh, limits. Uh, but what those limits do, they help you to see um, others in a, in a way that um, is peculiar, is different, um, is new, is old, um, has different colors. And mm -hmm. uh, so you can start to appreciate what is not you. You're able to see the beauty that you're already in, in others. And so you can wear their shoes. And when yeah. you wear their shoes, you are able to feel someone else. And that someone else is your best friend, yeah. is uh, your father, is your mother, um, is your sister, your cousins, your nephews. And, uh, and so, is your neighbor? Is uh, is the fly that's you're my neighbor. around my head? <laughs> you are my neighbor. We yes, were like five minutes from each other. That's how we met. Uh, that's how we met. Yeah, which is amazing. Um, so speaking of that, like you know, giving back and chari you know, the charitable heart that you do have. What um, what are some of the things that that have inspired you or music. kept you motivated besides music? I, mean, yes. I came in the studio. I mean, I knocked on his door and said, hey, a surprise studio visit today and this IG Live. And he's like, yeah, I'm totally down. Um, but he had the music on. Always. So you ha you always have, he always has the music on in his studio, always has a lot of energy. But um, what has kept you motivated during this time? I mean, besides music. 
to stay um, positive mentally. I mean, that's the thing that a lot of people are struggling with. Yeah. I struggled with it myself, with being isolated for well, five, I think six weeks now. I think your question already has the answer. So, and that's usually how it is, no? When you mm -hmm. question something, it's because you want to find the answer, but the answer is already in the question. So mm -hmm. I think you just said, you know, is, it only depends how you feel things. So if you feel good, you will have a great time and you're able to give that gift time to other people, mm -hmm. you know? That's passion, you know? Mm -hmm. If you love yourself, if you really do love yourself, you can love everyone, you know? That's, yeah. that's the answer. Well, it's also and the question. manifesting that and really yeah. and believing that. Um, Absolutely. And I think we all have been tested during this time of isolation, of really getting to know ourselves, um, digging in to layers that you know, we haven't taken time to, to focus on. So I like that you're dancing. I wish I could go yes. and dance closer to you. It's, a, it's, a, it's a French song uh, <laughs> by Celine Dion. Yeah, that, of course, Luckily. she's very uh, famous. Yeah. And um, she's Canadian French. Mm -hmm. And so I, I studied Celine. French in high school. And uh, that's how I discovered her. It was before Titanic. And, um, and so my teacher, um, she gave me the CD of uh, Celine Dion, I think it was the French album. Mm -hmm. And um, and when I hear her voice, it's like, wow, that's amazing. It's like Whitney Houston, uh, but she's white. <laughs> yeah, she's incredible. Yeah. She's and incredible live. Yes. You've heard her live before? Yeah. When, when my mom was pregnant, um, she used to put Whitney Houston in her belly. Mm. <laughs> so music was always in me, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's and awesome. In everyone. It's awesome. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to drink your coffee, sorry. Drink my coffee, yeah, drink my coffee. Um, so, he actually, one of the things that, you know, Marco, not only is he an amazing artist, right? Ceramicist, painter, he also has prints, so at all price points. So, I, I wanted to discuss that a little bit too, because, you know, everybody's, everybody's finances have been affected during, during this time, and we want to be sensitive to that. So, if, if if you're out there and you like art and you want to buy art, I mean, talk about your price point. I think the prints start at what, two hundred and seventy dollars or so. I th no, I think they're two uh, two hundred to start. 200? If you just want to okay. buy the paper one, mm -hmm. that I mean, I love paper. Um, um, actually, about paper, I mean, think about the Egyptians. That was also one of my biggest. Um, <clears throat> uh, um, how you, how you can say? Yeah. Inspiration. Inspiration, that's right. right. So, how do you say inspiration in Italian? Inspirazione. It's like <laughs> inspiration. you inhale. Inspiration. Like, like you breathe. I'm in. terrible at like Inspire. Like <laughs> you breathe and then you okay. let it out. <sighs> right. Let it go. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, they start uh, around $200. Uh, dollars. Yep. And uh, then they go up to as much you like. Okay. <laughs> Depends okay. on the size you pick. And uh, yeah. All right. So what about the painting side? A lot of your work is, is very large, large scale. Yeah. So, yeah. and I mean, you guys can't really tell. Let me pull the camera. But you can see like the height of the ceiling here. So he has a lot of space. Um, and that's another beautiful thing about being in Los Angeles. Because yeah. you can, you yeah. can find the city of like angels. This. City of Angels, the spaces are a little bit bigger than maybe some of the East Coast studios. Um, but talk about, like, the, what's the largest piece of work that you've ever created? Huh. I think they're so big that I don't even remember. Um, like, like a facade of a building. Okay. So you did a mural, right? You did a mural, was it right outside of the studio? It was, yeah, we actually... Well, pretty much, you know, artists, they have visions, and so they already know ahead what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so um, with Pernille that, and Mika, that um, they're my closest friends, I have a, you know, I have to say something before I, I can even start to talk, but I love to talk, so I've been talking a lot. You know, I have the most wonderful team um, of friends um, that, you know, <clears throat> that they're working with me, um, and first my family, um, and then I have around seven p 
people in my studio. Um, and then people that I work with outside the studio. So without them, um, I wouldn't be here today as you. Um, you that you're listening to us and um, takes takes a village takes a, yes. a lot of people yes. believing in you yes and, and yeah. you know I I've enjoyed working with your team and in, in organizing the call yeah. and are they just wonderful you know I, think, I love you guys <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> they they all love you and we're really grateful for this opportunity to come in and talk to you um, Mika ciao <laughs> So you guys, Mika, she's, I mean, Mika, she's from Israel, and uh, she's um, she's like uh, I don't know, like an angel from another world, and she's a mother of a son and the wife of a beautiful husband, Zaf, and Geffen is um, their child. And when you walk in their home, you feel that is your home, is your house, and that that means a lot. Amazing. So I know you have a lot of friends and family um, that are, have joined the live call. So if you guys have any questions or you want to uh, do any shout outs, please like pop those comments up and then we can address those questions. Um, but I wanted to go back to like your first experiences in Los Angeles. Like what was it like coming to LA, trying to find a studio? Cause there are also artists on this call and artists, you're an inspiration for for younger artists or, or artists that are trying to get started. So can you share some of your stories about how you got started here in Los Angeles? Well, it happened because uh, my ex-boyfriend was um, an actor from Germany and um, he, um, he was coming here for pilot season. Mm -hmm. So um, I was at the time in New York working with uh, the most amazing teacher I, I had in America. Mm -hmm. His name is uh, Steven Seals and okay. is um, the architect of the interior designers. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is a very special human being. And, um, and he was, you know, America, you know, if Italy is my country, America is my city. <laughs> because the Americans, they had the power to show me the way to believe in myself. There's not such a country that has this power in the world. I mean, look, Obama, um, Oprah Winfrey. Yeah. Um, I mean... Um, well, you have the technology companies that it are so I mean, I, I agree. Yeah, I lived in the Apple City in New York, and mm -hmm. first Boston, and Boston I met uh, my amazing, talented writer, uh, Laura, uh, that I call Laura. She's my first American friend. Um, um, and um, she's writing this sensational book that it will come out soon and it will be one of the most successful hit. Mm -hmm. I already know that. Ciao, Laura. <laughs> Hope you're there. Um, and um, so Boston, is, well, actually, sorry, we have to go back to my traveling. So my family, <clears throat> when I was eight, nine years old, they took me to America. And first was New York, and then we um, went to California. Mm -hmm. And uh, in California, we went, uh, also sorry, Nevada. But in California, we went to the Dead Valley, the uh, Sea Salt. Uh, what is, I don't remember now the name. Oh, uh, the, uh, what is the salt? Uh, oh, this. Uh, close to, well, you can see from the. The salt point, flats? Yes. Yeah. You can see it from the high point of uh, Joshua Tree. Now I don't remember. Yeah. If I'm someone like, over there I'm knows like what too. I'm talking about. If anybody knows, please make a comment. So yeah. To, to <clears throat> and then we went to the Grand Canyon. And yeah. I remember, like, uh, we took a little private plane. So crazy. We did that at that time. Um, and me, my mom, uh, my father, and Daniel. And uh, I was like, where the pilot was, like, I was, like, <laughs> on the window, looking everywhere. I did that, everywhere. too. Did you and do the helicopter? my brother on the other side was like, was like <laughs> Were you in the helicopter? No, it was the, it was the airplane. So it was I, actually yeah. worse, I think, because the helicopter has more a way to, you know, like, it was like... Yeah. And, but yeah, I, I and that, I think, in that I conquered the fears of flying, 
Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, the Salt Lake City, I think. Oh, you never been? Well, that was Salt Lake City. Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Because uh, I went uh, a month ago with my friend uh, Jeff and Ashley. Um, they are my spiritual uh, friends. Jeff Valley Salt Flats. That's yeah, we went is. to okay. we went Thank to you, Josh. Scott. We went to Josh Tree and. We had like a ball while we smoked the grass and everything in between. Yeah. And uh, thank God we did. <laughs> <laughs> I love Joshua Tree. Yeah, it was yeah. really beautiful. And, uh, and uh, we, and we, and, and Jeff, uh, that is an Aries, you know, is a scouter, is a, is a Boy Scout, um, like my brother. And, you know, those people, uh, you know, um, they are the one that they, they have like, a, they're in advance, like they already know the new land, the new earth, the new, they know everything, they have something special. Also Jeff and her wife, uh, um, Jessica, she's uh, an incredible uh, photographer. She goes all in the most dangerous places in the world and uh, she mm -hmm. practices the most higher level of meditation, stillness. So she is capable to wait hours, days, weeks, months to take one shot one picture of the animal in their habit. Amazing. So, and you will see her work. She's uh, beyond. Uh, yeah, um, I'd love to see her work. Yeah, I'm gonna get a new big house very soon, and she's gonna have a lot of artwork in my house. So, can we go back to like. Sorry, I always lose myself. It's okay. So, can <laughs> we go back to when you moved to Los Angeles and you wanted to find a studio? Like, yeah. I, there are artists that are on this call. Like, how did you find a studio? Because rent's expensive, like how? Yeah. What's the process you went through? Well, I've been very poor, um, and when uh, when well, we have to go back when when I came to Los Angeles. So it was eight years, eight years and a half ago, almost mm -hmm. in um, Feb, January nineteenth, I came here, and um, so I decided to stay, mm -hmm. and I didn't go back to work for Steven Seals. I decided to stay in Los Angeles, and I I. I didn't have friends, yeah. and I didn't have money. I had $20 in my pocket. I didn't have a car. I didn't have a place to stay. Uh, but I knew that I think what I liked about Los Angeles was the weather. Yeah, uh, we the, sun, <laughs> the sun. It's like the sun is, uh, is the source. Of, so it's like it gives you so much energy. Absolutely. And I fall in love. I left New York with a snowstorm. And I arrived here 19 of January, and people were in tin top and short. I'm like, yeah. oh my god, this is this is. It's a no brainer. Is this hell or heaven? I don't know. Like, it's great. So maybe both. Yeah. And so that that conquered me, and I decided, you know what? I lived in Germany for three years. I lived in Spain for one year. I lived in New York for almost three years, where I met all my amazing friends, like James, uh, James Jordan is my god uh, father, and. Um, give everything to him and then um, and I lived in Vancouver in Canada that's uh, for three months because my aunt Michelle uh, sister of my mom um, lives in uh, um, in uh, in Canada and she has her family with her children and Richard her husband and um, and you know I didn't speak English sorry I have to say that too <laughs> so, so, so eight years ago when you, when you so came to LA or when you came to LA yeah. I, were you able to speak much English? Yes, I was because uh, when I was in Germany, well, first, I, uh, you know, in Boston, I went to study English um, close to Boston University because my best friend, Elena Bucci from Faenza, um, she uh, couldn't make it to my graduation day in Rome. So that's where I lived when I, when I went to university. So she was so sad that she couldn't make it for my graduation day that she uh, gave me with a uh, um, flight ticket. Mm -hmm. and to America. So it's amazing, no? And, amazing. and, and also, I have to tell you something. Oh, this, is, this is very special. <laughs> this is where my heart melts. Yeah. So my grandfather, uh, Daniel, the same name of my brother, Daniel Lorenzetto, he um, served uh, the army in Sardinia, or I don't know, Bombardiere di Sardinia, I think it was called, and um, the most beautiful island um, in Italy. With mm -hmm. Sicily, of course, and all bailed by and everyone else. Yeah, I have not been there yet. But oh my god! This. I go there every every summer. Uh, my best friend Silvia and Claudio they have this beautiful house uh, with this incredible garden. The view, um, I think, it was in Santo Doro Bay, 
and it's just priceless. You have to go to Sardinia if you want to recharge because like, nature and the food and the people, Sardinia is very special. I definitely want yeah. to get back to your country. Yeah. It's on my list. It's definitely on my list. I love, I love that you get, you lose yourself in your questions when I answer and I get lost in my answer. I don't even remember the question now. <laughs> so people, so some comments are, I need to turn around. The whole point of this is that we're trying to keep a proper social distance while we're doing this live call. And I surprised Marco. Um, Boom! Oh, 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 oh. So scary. He surprised, he surprised me. <laughs> yeah, I haven't had anybody that close to me in like six weeks now. So um, I, can only, I can only give you love. Don't worry. Yeah. So, yeah. The Italians do have so much love. I appreciate that. I need that right now. Um, so what else can we talk about? Like, what are you working on right now? I don't know. Can you show us any, any of the Do paintings work that you're working on right now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, well, what can I we see? That? Well, actually, the one behind you, I can okay. I do it. Can okay. I switch the camera like this? No, yeah, let's that switch it like... Yeah. So yeah. This, is, um, okay. this is amazing. So I did ayahuasca. Wow. Double. That double is a uh, spiritual... Um, how do you call it? A spiritual um, manifestation. Yeah. Um, and um, so, well, I go to Brazil a lot. Brazil mm -hmm. is another place where I get very inspired. That's why there's a lot of yellow, green, blue. I yeah. actually have a friend of mine from Brazil, from Salvador, uh, yeah. stay, stay with me in quarantine so he can learn English. Can you imagine with me? Nice. <laughs> That's actually how. So, we go back to the question of when you asked me uh, how I started here, I didn't know how to start. But everyone in America loves Italy, and everyone loves the food, and I'm a Absolutely. great chef. 100%. And of course. Love it. Very modest, too. <laughs> and um, and that's how I met my best friend, Sarah. Um, hmm. And um, uh, Sarah, she's half Italian, half British. Uh, she's um, American, of course. And uh, she uh, runs uh, one of the biggest PR companies in America with Gio. Uh, Michelle Marie Piar, and uh, so she wanted to learn Italian so bad, and through my friend Paolo Maschitti, that they've been rescuing animals for all their life, um, he introduced me to Sarah, mm -hmm. and me and Sarah, we just click. She's a Leo, and I'm right. a Sagittarius, and yeah. you know, Leo and Sagittarius are just like best friends from the start. And that's actually how I met Jeff, how I met Maureen, how I met everyone else in my inner group. group. And uh, Sarah and Jill, they, they had a vision of me. They saw how talented I was and, you know, they represent the most beautiful brand in fashion and in design. And, and they're so successful. So what happened with them? They loved, they worked so much that Jill one day told me, Marco, I'm going to make you a superstar. You're going to be incredible because your work is special. And the Jill words come from Sarah because I didn't met Jill without Sarah. So both of them, they had an idea. They said, we had lunch with Mandana, another great friend of mine, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> that she should run for president. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. so what happened? Um, uh, yeah, we had lunch in a Japanese place in West Hollywood. Yeah. And uh, beautiful lunch. And we all know each other without knowing. Yeah. And, um, and Sarah came up to me and he said, you know what? I'm going to represent you. We never done this. You know, we, we don't represent artists. Mm -hmm. We never done this. And, but uh, we love your work so much. And I know you don't have the money. The money for us is not an issue. So they taught me that money in America actually are not that important how it would look like from the appearances. Right. And, and they said, you know, we, we will put our heart in, in promote your work because we are your best friends, but we would love to have your artwork in our home. Amazing. And what happened, they, they, they were redesigning their home, they bought their new homes, and because the company, the Michel, mm, Marie Piar went very high, so they have, I don't know, maybe 300 clients, something like that. Are, are they in New York? They are also in New York, close okay, to the Flatter building. Uh, yeah, I think I'm, yeah I think they have I'm a beautiful studio office uh, 
they have like 45 employees, it's insane. Yeah. And they're doing great even this time of difficulties. So it means that, you know, their heart is there. Sure, and sure. so I made, in the love of their hearts. Oh, sorry. So we can see your face. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Hello. Let's see your face. There we go. <laughs> uh, maybe right. I should sit. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, I start to work a lot in commission. So what does it mean? Uh, that, um, so uh, private commissions, you started doing that with them for their, for their home? Yeah, so I started they before. They told you because... like, how large a painting they wanted and <clears throat> you created it. Yeah. I think it's very special when a stranger, because we're all strangers now, we don't really know each other. You know, we, we think we know, but we don't. Uh, but we try our best. Uh, I, in America, I learned fake it until you make it. Fuck is what that's why it works. Yeah, <laughs> I fake yeah. it all all the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and I even changed my name. My name is Mark, uh, um, like Saint Mark. But what happened is that uh, my, my family were raised very Christian. Half of my family is the other one couldn't care less about the church, uh, and um, they will burn it. But they didn't. <laughs> so um, what happened is, um, sorry, I got lost again. Really? Um, no, we were talking about like doing a commission. So ah. say, for example, you know, somebody wants to, to have a painting in their home, you could create a, a, a specific size for them. Yes. So because a lot of your work is really large. Yes. Um, that might not fit, especially like East Coast homes. Um, people that live in New York, a lot of people in the call are from New York. So. Um, in LA, maybe there's larger, <laughs> larger wall space, but you could create a, a painting based on the wall size, which is great. Um, and then also there's different price points. So um, if you guys want to want to reach out to us after, or if you have questions with pricing or whatever, yeah. feel free to reach out. Also, we um, this is a, thank you for um, go deep in the question because uh, sometimes I need guidance or I, okay. I get lost. That's kind of like my job. I caught Getting you off guard today. I caught you off guard. I know. To Let's be breathe here one first. second. <laughs> Much better. So. Okay. <laughs> um, Actually, we are working on something very special. That was the Mika and Pranila idea. Um, and then also Diana, <clears throat> uh, Delia, Sophia, Ariane, Maria, Ariane. Um, she's one of my, you know, she's my personal assistant. She does all my things for me. And then, uh, um, um, and others that now my names, you know, like names. So you work out as like a special. Yeah. Part, new so special part. you know, I work with women. So all all my closest friends are women, and I'm surrounded. All my team are women, most of them, and um, uh, so they nurtured me. <laughs> I need a uh, big mama, and uh, so from them you learn um, the capacity to give back into action. Yeah. And uh, so uh, they um, uh, were working with Pranila. Where is Pranila? Um, so there is a, it was difficult to choose a charities for um, these very difficult times, no? Yeah. Where are you? Ciao. <laughs> Look how beautiful she is. <laughs> she She's is. from Copenhagen. She's very shy. She's very shy. So okay. talk about the charitable project real quick. We'll kind of wrap, maybe we can wrap up with that. Um, talking Look about how beautiful what... she is. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> very shy, very shy. So uh, what happened is, uh, um, um, yeah, so it was their idea to, um, so we, uh, actually we, we did, my first big charity event was in January with the uh, Transgender Youth Center. So I am Mika saw that I never really exhibit my figure at work. Now I'm going to show you. Okay. So those portrait here. Let me see. Okay. So let me see. Okay. That's Queen Elizabeth II. Because that one. That one, yeah. Okay. Because when I was a child, you know, I'm, I'm British. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. so I love everything that, um, um, you know, was sparkling and good yeah. Lord said Stone. I, my, with ceramic and everything, my first fine art was uh, becoming a jeweler. So I didn't. 
but um, this was the Byzantine. So the, the, so the charity thing that you're working on, let's just... Guy got lost again. Fo yes, focus on that. The local thing, you did ah, something in January. Los Angeles started. Mission, that's right. Los Angeles Mission is what we're working on now. Yeah, we're working so, on that because uh, on my free time, uh, when it's possible, uh, I, um, I go around my neighborhood, uh, do I have two? And, um, and I engage with the homeless people. Okay. Because uh, in the homeless, you, you see the beauty of uh, not having anything in the way how um, we perceive life day by day. You know, we're a little misled in the meaning of life. Oh, for sure. And um, so if, if what you notice when, when you see an homeless, you first the word, clochard, homeless, they don't have a house, a home. And I've been in that place where I didn't have the money to pay rent. I had to ask for money to my friends mm -hmm. in a certain point of my life, and it was mm -hmm. difficult, it was embarrassing, it was shameful. Yeah. And, um, and then that fear never leaves you, you know? Um, and um, so- I understand that. So what does it mean, what, what is a fear? Why are you afraid of life? So when you, when you fear something, now right now I'm fearing one about six, I don't know. Um, you understand when you get the chills in your old body, you are close to victory. You understand that that is where life talks to you yeah. and you're not talking to life. Yeah. It's where you to. really grow. Yes. In those moments of struggle and pain, yes. it's where you really grow. So is yes, is you know, like and <clears throat> there's a moment of quietness and I you know, if I have to tell you the truth, last December I turned thirty five and I and I woke up in the morning and I didn't feel anything. Did you just feel some like, em like emptiness? Yeah, some empty, and like, like an empty glass. Yeah. Those glass that you see here, you see? Yeah. And, and, I, and I remember that everything was upsetting. Mm. And I didn't understand why, because I had, everything yeah. i i choose everything i wanted to be and and you still felt empty why do you think that was what were you i think that you have to you have to um <laughs> lauren hill singing right now <laughs> sister act yeah Well, I, I, my birthday is next week. And really? I, Are you a Taurus? Yeah. Oh my God, Taurus, I love yeah. it. Like my cousin, Georgia. Yeah? Yes. She's and, my godmother. <laughs> yeah, and I actually was having a conversation with my mom last night about, and just some friends was like, hey, I'm going to be alone on my birthday for the first time in my, in my life. Um, and a lot of people are celebrating birthdays while they're in quarantine and while they're you know, going through this, and my heart just goes out to all the people that are alone and that aren't, that don't have somebody with them. Um, but it just makes you really think. So back to what you're, what you were saying is that when you were, when you turned 35, you were going through this. You woke up, and you felt like this, this emptiness and this, you know, what, I have everything that I thought I wanted, but I'm still, I still feel empty. I still feel <clears throat> some pain. So. I think the, the beauty of your work is that you're pouring that emotion that you have into your paintings and we feel that, we, fake, we feel your energy uh, through your work and uh, I mean I feel the energy I'm six feet away from you now and I still feel so much love and energy from you and uh, thank you Thank you for sharing that, that was very, <laughs> that, it got me, I almost lost it there for a second. <laughs> So, um, did, that really yeah. touches you know, me in many ways too. What, what well. is the song Amazing Grace? Mm -hmm. um, how, how does it go? Can you, can, can amazing, someone... Amazing, great, uh, grace, amazing, amazing Grace, 
How sweet the sound the that road. saved a wretch like me. Not a great singer. Um, <laughs> how's it go? I once was lost, but now I'm Yes, I don't that's, know. That's, that's the sound. Um, so yeah. you have to lose yourself. That's yeah. why I lose myself all the time. And I can't even remember the question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you start laughing. Well, we, I, could go, I, could, <laughs> I could continue this conversation with you. For sure. And uh, we will, we will. We'll, you know, you're five minutes from me, and you're my neighbor, you're my friend. You're, I love your work, I love your energy, and your passion for your, for what you're doing. And thank you for just having a really intimate conversation with with us, with me, and with us today. Um, it was really, really appreciated. So, um, with that, my friend, I'm gonna sign off for now. Thank you, everybody, for joining from everywhere. We appreciate it. We're sending everybody love. <laughs> I hope I hope it was fun though. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't I don't I didn't want to finish um, with a sad note. And uh, so I found myself again. And if I if I was able to do it with nothing and I surrender to nothing, uh, I hope this can give you the strength uh, to find the same beauty that is in you mm -hmm. and and please become the artist you are already mm -hmm. you know um it will help the world the world will heal fast and you will feel better by yourself and i can tell you from the bottom of my heart that it's beating so fast right now mm -hmm. um you are the light of this world like me you already have it all. And once, I have to say this, because it means everything to me. During Second World War II, um, Winston Churchill had to give the biggest speech of his life, and it's the speech of life himself, to the National British Radio Station. And... Um, and he's told to the English people, so to the world, that on the first battle against the Nazis, they won. They won the battle. And, and that made the English people find pride. Mm. They, turned, they didn't turn back, but they went yeah. forward. Yeah. But did. what happened after the speech? The nation was like having a party, but the king and the council, the military council, called on Churchill. And, and they said, why, why did you lie? Why did you lie um, to our country, to our nation? Why? And, and Churchill looked at them surprised, like, like, are they stupid or what? Yeah, they are. And, and said, I, I didn't lie. I, I don't lie. I told something they didn't know yet. Yeah. And that's how they won the war. Mm -hmm. So that's how you win the coronavirus. Feel strong. That's how works your immune system. You we are casting your rock. You are crystal. Absolutely, yes. We will get through this. Stay strong. Stay healthy, everyone. Marco, again, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your honesty, your uh, just sharing so much intimacy and love and compassion uh, through today's conversation. Thank you. So, thank you. Right, thank friend. you. Ciao. All right. Ciao. Ciao. Talk to you soon. Ciao. Ciao. Bye, everyone. Ciao. Ciao, mama.